You may not believe it. I am especially fond of you. Mm -hmm. I want to heal that wound that's grown inside you and between us. There's no easy answer that'll take your pain away. No instant fix that's enduring. Life takes a bit of time and a lot of relationship. Relationship? Mm -hmm. You're the almighty God, right? You know everything. You're everywhere, all at once. You have limitless power. Somehow, you let my little girl die. And she needed you most. You abandoned her. I never left her. If you are who you say you are, where were you when I needed you? And all you see is your pain. I'm just getting to the good part, too. How about you let that load, and I'll uh, do a little bit of an intro then. That movie clip there is from the movie called The Shack, which is from a book. I know there's a lot of controversy around that, but I want you to look past that because we're into this season of healing, and we are on part two, technically, of this journey that I'm hoping that we're all taking very seriously. See, last week, we discussed this whole concept of how do I connect with this God and what is needed for my healing and, and the thing is what I love at the beginning of this video that is summarized which is essentially what we talked about last week is this idea of there is no easy fix for the deep-rooted hurts and pains in our life we want God to be this genie at times because that'd be so much more convenient we, we heard the words of Martha and Mary as their brother Lazarus was sick and they knew the outcome that was coming which was death and they sent him a letter, which is essentially the culmination of our prayers at times, saying, God, let me remind you of this person that you love is sick. And not only is it going to cause them absolute death, but it's going to cause me pain that is unbearable. So if you just please do something to spare me from this, I would greatly appreciate it because that fear of the pain that is coming terrifies and consumes me. And all the while, Jesus responds, but not to them. And not in the way that they wanted to hear at the time. He said, this is not going to end in death. This is going to end in a way that there's so much more than you can even conceive right now. That yes, there will be pain and it will be a journey of pain, but you are not alone in it. And the outcome is going to be far greater than you could ever imagine. Because I am not the God who designs pain, suffering, and death. I am the resurrection and the life. That definitely bleeds into what we're talking about this morning. Perfect timing because Steve fixed it. Thank you. Let's carry on with the video and then we'll dive right in this morning. You lose sight of me. Stop talking. You will help me when you couldn't help her. And because of you, she's gone. Unless you can change that, I will never be free. The truth sets everyone free. And the truth has a name. He's over in his woodshed right now, covered in sawdust. Truth? 
know that story. You left him too. Seems like you have a bad habit of turning your back on those you supposedly love. I'm not who you think I am. He said it himself. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? No, Mac. You misunderstand the mystery. What my son chose to do didn't cost us both dearly. Love always leaves a mark. We were there together. I never left him. I never left you. I never left Miss. some more of these Yukon gold fries from Skip the Dishes. Yukon's greatest creation. <laughs> Brandon, everybody knows these were invented in Guelph. <laughs> That's such a you thing to say. It's probably Skip good time for a little bit you of a great humor reprieve. Let's uh, close that before it jumps to another one. C.S. Lewis said the following, God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks to us in our conscience, but shouts in our pains. It's his megaphone to a deaf world. It's the thing and the hard truth about it is I've never felt God more closely and I've never been more able to almost physically reach out and touch him and engage with him than when I am the most compromised and broken and in need of that connection. But the problem is our human nature wants to be comfortable and, and it is instinctive to want to avoid pain. Nobody goes intentionally and lights himself on fire because, hey, it's a Tuesday and I've got nothing better to do till 3 o'clock. But when it feels like we are on fire, and the world is closing in around us, and we say, God, why did you let this happen? He says, I didn't do this. This is a part of life, but I never left you. It's amazing that it's this it's incredible trade-off. You have this absolute pain, but this absolute connection. Because we need it. And he says, I will never leave you. Jefferson Bethke says this. He says, the Bible is not a rule book. It's a love letter from God to us. We are the recipients of his love and his love letter. It's not about my, or in this case, our performance. It's about Jesus' performance for me, for you, for us. Grace isn't there for some future me, but the real me, the me who struggled, the me who was messy, the me who was addicted to porn, the me who didn't have all the answers, the me that was insecure. He loved me in my mess. He was not waiting until I cleaned myself up. This is that groundwork again that really leads into what we're talking about in this second part of our healing journey. This question of, if I am suffering, how can I trust you to take care of me? Now, at this point in the story, in the Gospel of John, Jesus does arrive. Lazarus has been dead for days. And when Martha hears of this, she goes to him, suffering a pain that Jesus could have stopped. And that's important because that lays the groundwork for the interaction that we just saw in the video, but also the interaction in Scripture. But more importantly, sometimes I believe the interactions that we have with God is a real broken people. Martha then said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. If you had just shown up when I needed you, none of this would have happened. Max said in the movie that if you just love someone so much, why didn't you save my little girl? Why didn't you save her? Why didn't you spare me my pain? And Martha is saying the same thing here. If you had just shown up when I asked you to, all of this would have been avoided. I would not be suffering. This person would not be gone. 
first thing I want us all to realize is that sometimes I think it's so easy for us to beat ourselves up over these type of approaches to God. But I guarantee you, he cherishes our realness and our vulnerability, even if it's misguided. As long as it draws us to him, he has big enough shoulders to take all of it. And he has a love that is so great, he just wants you to go to him, even if you're dumping and blaming him misguidedly. He says, come, let me work through that with you, but I want to validate and hear you. See, this speaks to me because, as I said before, when I went through my breakdown and my depression and my almost suicidal tendencies, I blamed God because I figured, listen, this all came about because I was in a ministry position in a different place years ago, mind you, because I was pastoring. Where were you? You led me down this road to what? To suffer? To almost die? Where were you? You called me to a ministry and some of it's going well, but this other part is going horribly and I'm paying for it? How is that fair? And I felt like I was met with this absolute silence. And I had this, this animosity at times and this bitterness and this resentfulness and it came up and I really went to him and I laid it all out as I felt in that moment to God and I let him have it. <laughs> and you know what? He never turned me away. Never condemned me never sent me to hell, which I have deserved time and time again. He never said, you are worthless, you shut your mouth, you little peon. He just loved me and he listened. So step one in this next part of our healing journey, whatever it is in your heart that, that has been defining you that you have not been able to let go of, you go to God with it even if you are angry and you just be real and vulnerable, but know that he always loves and listens even when we are wrong. See, pain creates a distance. Jesus needs to heal us from it because that pain creates a separation between all relationships that we hold dear, our relationship with God, our relationship with others, and our relationship with ourselves. The simplest way to break down what sin is, it's brokenness that causes distance and creates isolation. That's why Jesus said, if you love God with all that you are, your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, that's an all-encompassing thing. So I can repair relationships between, first of all, you and me, you and others, and you and yourself. And then Martha continues, she says, even now I know whatever you ask God, God will give you. Jesus says to her this, and I love this response, your brother will rise again. You've said what is true. And, and what I love about this is it really creates the human narrative. And I'm going to come back to this in a second. But verse 24 says this. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And I am so guilty of this. And maybe you are too. See, what I read here is maybe more of my own experiences. When God says something, she says the right thing. Whatever you ask God now, he will do. Right? She's, she's creating this, this open door of, Lord, even if you want to change my situation right now, I know that you are capable. And what does Jesus say? Your brother will rise again. It's the whole purpose he came to bring resurrection. And what does she respond with that? Oh, I know he will rise again on the last day. Have you ever been so emotionally compromised that when you're going to God with a real vulnerable thing and you start to have this connection that you have these auto-responses of religious rhetoric that just come up because you think it's the right thing to say at the right time? Because I have certainly been guilty of saying this exact thing and Jesus is trying to do something now here in this situation. I'll throw a scripture out of context and say, yes, one day, Lord God, when I'm dead, gone and buried and I'm on the other side, everything will finally be fixed, including this. And Jesus says, I want to do a healing work in it now. I want to start a journey now, not then. Don't just put your hope in the resurrected life. I want to be Jesus now. Because I am so guilty of the exact same response. And Jesus gives her the answer. Yeah, I'm here, to, I'm here to heal him. I raise him. Oh, I know on the last day, Lord God, and in the book of Peter, chapter blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? But that's the human narrative. It's a real, honest response. And I love that it's in here. See, Jesus answers this, but he, she can't hear it. All she can respond with in her grief and her overwhelming suffering is just what she was brought up with, those, those basic religious truths that just 
it's easy just to kind of hand over a catchphrase in those times, right? And this is what Jesus says to her. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. He answers her. I am the answer to your question. You're asking me for something, but you're looking beyond me. You're not seeing me. You're not hearing me. You're not engaging with me. You're not understanding that the answer to everything you're asking for is right here. And all you're seeing and feeling is your pain, but let me be in it with you. Let me heal you from it. Let me take you on a journey to remove this as your identity so you can be identified with me. In me, I am right here. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? He offers this charge. He gives this opportunity for response. And she says to him, Yes, Lord, I have believed that you are the Christ, the Son of God. And then her moment of connection ends. And then Mary gets word back where she's grieving that Jesus is here. And it says this, when Mary came where Jesus was and she saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. She has this exact same response. And it's funny because in times I think that as people, I think we hold ourselves and other people up to too high a standard of expectation when it comes to, quote unquote, getting it right with God. You fell down this way before. Why didn't you get your poop together and uh, figure it out so you could avoid it going forward? Sometimes I need more grace than you. I'm not as strong as you or as gifted as you in other ways. And I've heard it preached, and I've even heard other people have the same attitude. Well, well, someone else just went through that. Why couldn't you have learned from their experiences? It's all good in theory, but sometimes you need to experience it for yourself, Right? It's amazing that Jesus just walked through this conversation with Martha and here comes Mary with the exact same thing, with the exact same experience, with the exact same words and she's able to come to the exact same Jesus and still be validated, heard, loved and listened to. And when Jesus saw her weeping, I love this because now we're taking the perspective from Jesus as he's already explaining why he's there to fix this for them. Okay? Okay? And they can't comprehend that because they're people much like us and as people when we get overwhelmed and, and compromised in our emotions, even if Jesus is giving us the clear answer, we just can't get it. And he says he sees and he saw her weeping and all the Jews who came with her were also weeping. He's seeing a community that is acting like a church that is a broken body for all, that is coming together collectively and mourning for the one part that is hurting so that it can hurt together and heal together. And he sees this movement of people living life right, but they're so compromised and crushed. He was deeply moved in spirit and was troubled. This is the most important part as we start getting into this. He was deeply moved because he saw the church being the church, essentially. Living life as a whole because of one part. He was deeply moved in spirit and was troubled. The word troubled comes from the Greek teroso, which means Jesus became anxious, distressed, to have his calmness of mind taken away. People think, well, why? Why? Why would Jesus allow himself to feel something? Was it because he was human? Yes, to a degree, but it's more important than that. It's the character of God. See, when we suffer, he doesn't just want us to suffer alone and sit there and nod his head and say, yes, mm-hmm, I hear you, I acknowledge you, that's great, get it together. It's a personal thing. And when it becomes personal, becomes so much deeper. That leads to the next point before I continue. And Jesus said, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. What Jesus is saying is, where is the source of your pain? Where is the thing that you've buried deep down that has caused you such distress in your life? And if Jesus is saying that to us today, what is your response? Yes, Lord, come and see. And then it says something so interesting. The shortest verse of Scripture, John, in 30, verse 35 here, it says, Jesus wept. Why? 
because it showed his emotional matching scar to the people he was keeping relationship with. See, in the video, you have God talking with Mac about his daughter, and he says, yeah, but you abandoned Christ, too. And she says, you don't understand. We have matching scars because of our love for you, but my love for him as well. And he showed him the mark on the wrist, and that's exactly what Jesus is doing here. See, and it, it boggles the mind because as people, we want to be the most efficient, right? Jump from step one to step ten. Jesus hears the prayers. He heals the problem. Spares me suffering and pain. That's human nature, and that's okay to want that. But that's not what happened for Martha and Mary and Lazarus. Lazarus has been in a tomb in the desert for days, which is essentially an oven. He comes, and he hears this, this, this honest response. Says, if you'd only been here in my moment when I needed you, this would have been avoided. And he doesn't condemn. He loves. He loves so much that even when people are coming with that type of an approach to him, and he sees that they are emotionally compromised and weeping, he joins in and shows absolute empathy to actually experience the pain of those he loves. Why? Because he loves us. Jesus is in it with us, guys. And when we are broken, he breaks down with us. He doesn't need to. He's there to fix it. It blows my mind. But he chooses to because he loves us, because we are not alone. And he validates the experience and he shares in it with us because he is in it with us always. Even when he says, show me where it is. Show me. They have no idea what he's going to do. They have no idea what it's going to look like. But they have to choose to actually say, okay, come. But before that, before we get there, let's cry together. See, religion doesn't do that. Religion says, come and appease a God from afar with the best that you are and the best that you can do in the hopes that maybe he'll show you grace. Jesus says, come with everything that you are, even with bad motivations and intentions, just because you want to come to me and I will receive you and I will love you and I will forgive you and I will be with you always to the end of the age. And I will share in it with you. I will cry with you. And there's never been more powerful times in my life when I've laid down and wept for different times and there is a sense of absolute value and love that weeps, just sweeps over me. And not because I manufactured it out of some need because there's something that's beyond myself that just shows up and says, I'm in it with you. I think sometimes that is the, the thing that as people we tend to skip over but that really is the catalyst for absolute healing is to know that your value, that your pain means something. That God says, it matters to me. You matter to me. I feel it with you. Now show me where it is so we can do something about it. See, empathy is a noun. It's the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. Jesus says that God is love. Love is a verb. It's an action. And it leads to other things and other qualities just as empathy. To meet you in it. To encourage you to bring it to him. Even if you're compromised. Even if you're blaming. Just as you are. So that Jesus can say, let's cry together. But show me where it is. Where have you buried it? Because I'm here to bring life. I am the author of your new created existence not your demise. I am the author of your healing, not your pain. And I love you. That's the one thing I think we can take away this morning is the fact that Jesus says, I love you as you are right now, always. God, I just give you this moment. I just give you this time, Lord Jesus. I pray for conviction, Lord, for everyone here and and courage to be able to identify if there's something we need to give to you that that has been defining us as a pain from the past for too long. Or, Lord, something we think that we can't even heal from this side of eternity, Lord God. That you will knock on the door, Lord, and even if you don't show up in the way that we think is right by us, that we will have the ability to go to you no matter what state of mind, no matter what stage of life we are in, and say, 
whatever needs to be said, Lord, but also to be validated, loved, embraced, met in our moment of absolute brokenness, Lord, and have you share in that with us because you love us. Lord, and take us to a place of absolute healing. Lord, remind us of the emotional scars that you share with us, Lord, that mark you in that moment just as it does us. Lord, I pray for an absolute newness in the way that we relate to you and connect with you, that we just have a desire to lay it down at the feet of someone who loves us, who seeks after us, not a God of appeasement, but a God who searches, who tracks down and follows and will not stop seeking us with arms wide open always. Jesus, let your love be felt. Let that love be felt. Lord, help us to give it to you and do a new work in us today. In Jesus' name, amen.